Twitter is officially dead, Battle Mage gets its first appearance in a gaming handheld, and hey, AMD, NVIDIA, unholy combination? Now can uh, fraternize. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Monday, May 20th, 2024. And we're gonna start off today talking about the move that shook the internet on Friday. Elon Musk decided to just push to production the fact that Twitter is dead on a Friday afternoon. X.com is now what it officially is called, no matter how you type it in. It used to be that even if you typed in X.com to go to the social media website, it would just redirect to Twitter.com, but that is no longer. However, there are a few weird little situations, like a few things like health.twitter.com still go to the Twitter domain, but it's also was found out that they're doing this on a temporary redirect and on a permanent 301 redirect, which is just par for the course for how you would expect Elon to do things, especially with a logo like that. What it, what are we in, word art? That actually kind of does look like the Microsoft Word logo. Wow, not spectacularly well done, especially since it was officially changed to be X Corp as of April of 2023, took them a full year to get the entire domain situation figured out and still a little tricky. There's still a few web browsers out there that can't access x.com for security and privacy reasons, allegedly. So it's all changing and uh, most people are still likely to call it Twitter, but but we'll see how that plays out now that you can't type twitter.com and have it stay that. And Apple doesn't want to keep their phones staying the same. And according to reports, the 2025 iPhone is going to be thinner. This is going to be the iPhone 17, the ultra slim one it's gonna be small and it's gonna have things like the cameras instead of being on the corner it's gonna be in the middle and the reason they're doing this is to have a huge shakeup it's gonna be the first major change in design since the iPhone X that came out we're back to that again I prefer to call it iPhone Twitter but it should be significantly thinner than the current iPhone models and kind of just keeping in line with what Apple did with the new iPad Pro models which are the thinnest devices that Apple has ever released coming in at 5.1 millimeters are that we snapped, it's right back there. We framed it. In case you don't know what I'm talking about, you can check out the short that we did where we did a teardown on the M4 Apple iPad Pro. But this is also allegedly, it's not quite clear if the thin phone is going to be part of the lineup or the entire redesign is gonna take over the entire iPhone 17 lineup, but it does seem like they're gonna get rid of the Plus model, just like they got rid of the Mini model because not enough people are buying them. And so they're gonna try something just a little bit different where you get a thin phone, just ever, you can just smack it on the table and snaps in half. Just get ready for all of those those Ben tests, they're gonna be great. And AI companies are getting ready to spend more money on the content that they're training all of their models on. And now we have the latest deal where OpenAI is going to be paying Reddit for the rights to actually use all of the Reddit posts in their training data. This is on top of the $60 million deal that Reddit has already signed with Google for them to use it in all of their AI training models. Now Reddit is trying to monetize it out to OpenAI, especially with Reddit being one of the largest source of natural human communication out on the internet, it does make sense that these large language models want to start putting it in there, but is also just part of the wave of companies having to start actually getting permission to use the things that they were training their models on in the first place. OpenAI has signed a bunch of different deals as of late and likely to have more as time goes on, especially as the New York Times copyright lawsuit against them plays out. And if it gets ruled in New York Times favor, that could potentially undo a lot of the progress in the training data that's been popping up in AIs lately. But while OpenAI striking a deal, why don't you strike a deal with Reese? Or he'll strike a few with you, however. Yo, welcome back to you the deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Happy Monday, everyone. Hope you guys had a good weekend. And hey, look, some deals over here. Starting off today, we have the Algato Wave DX Dynamic XLR microphone going for only $79.99, making it $20 off. The next up, we have the Deepcool LT720 Premium, which is a 360 millimeter AIO CP liquid cooler for only $106.24 with included promo code, making it $33.75 off. And then lastly, we have this Acer 27 inch 1440p 170 hertz VA panel gaming monitor for only $149.99 with included promo code making it $100 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Thanks, Reese. We got a nice little deal going on with Battle Mage GPUs because they're supposed to be first shown off in the Lunar Lake laptop chips, which have already been announced by Intel, specifically trying to highlight how good they are at AI, but there have been leaked benchmarks on how Battle Mage performs, and it appears to be very good compared to what the ARC graphics are. So this newest handheld got leaked in some Computex situation where the GP10 Waibu is gonna be on showcase at the Taipei Nanging 
Exhibition Hall 1, which I'm going to be able to go physically check that out. This looks like the One Player X, which also had a Meteor Lake chip inside, so it's not quite clear if they took design inspirations or if uh, they're working together on it, but it's going to have Lunar Lake, which means it's going to have Battle Mage, and this is the first handheld as well as the first like gaming oriented thing that's going to be hosting Intel's next generation GPUs. But we also have a look at what Nvidia's next generation GPUs are going to look like because some people got into an overclocking battle with the RTX 4070 Ti. A pair of Brazilian YouTubers decided to modify the memory chips that were on a 4070 Ti, replacing them with faster versions and then overclocking the snot out of them just to see how much performance they can rip out of those bad boys. And with that performance of the memory overclock, just the memory overclock, they were able to have it outperform the RTX 4080, showing you that overclocking both on the core and the memory can go a little ways, especially as we're looking at the RTX 50 series to potentially have up to 28 gigabits per second of memory. Whereas in this overclocking battle, the 4070 Tissiper had 26 gigabits per second. So it's gonna be a small increase when it comes to the 50 series, but that can allow for much faster gaming, which is exactly what you wanna see. But in case you feel like Nvidia is leaving you in the dust, and you're not looking forward to the 50 series launch because you're thinking, oh man, what sort of proprietary feature are they gonna launch that I can't use on my current card? Well, don't worry. There are game devs out there who are trying to make sure that you still have life out of that RTX 2060 Super that you bought a few years ago. And that is happening with Ghost of Tsushima. This launched on Friday, thanks to a Nixus port from the PlayStation title over to PC. And what it allows you to do natively with no mods, because we have seen this with mods before, but this is actually built into the game. You can use DLSS 2 for your upscaling and then use FSR 3 for your frame generation, even if you're on an RTX 20 series card. There's been testing of it out on the internet. A few users have been reporting, like this user with an RTX 3090 was able to get 170 FPS in 4K maxed out, which you likely would not be able to do if you couldn't turn FSR 3 frame gen on, but it's just a nice combination of features that Nvidia definitely doesn't want to give you. They say that the optical flow accelerators that they put in the latest RTX 40 series cards prevent you from using the frame generation that they've developed for DLSS 3, which I don't necessarily doubt. I think they probably tied some of the enhancements into the physical architecture of the chip, but AMD showing that you don't necessarily even need that in order to have a good frame generation experience. Nvidia intentionally chose to make sure that they took advantage of the optical flow accelerators, whereas AMD tried to make sure that whatever GPU you're running, at least if it's somewhat modern, hey, you can uh, you can start punching those FPS numbers all the way to the moon. Your RTX 2060 ain't quite so dead yet as long as game devs start continuing to put both the DLSS and FSR things in side by side, which we've talked about how Microsoft is working to make sure that there's a much easier way to do that for DirectX 12 games. Allegedly, it's just gonna be like a one click button that makes it so game devs can implement it, which would be great and allow for more beautiful things like this to happen in the future without you having to modify things inside of your computer. And I'm not gonna modify any of your comments from Friday. I'm just gonna read them and then respond to them. So let's do that. Over on Floatplane, NRP said, I believe that all this new naming scheme crap is ignorant as hell. And I believe that it's gonna do nothing but hurt us as a community and it's starting to make me question everything I've learned since 1995 and it's making me double check my priorities because if you're trying that hard to hide info then it must not be worth my money to me because if you throw the info at me saying buy this one now it's just buy this one it will work don't worry get home and you realize it compares to Ryzen 3 because I didn't spend five hours research that's exactly what's happening with AMD on their mobile naming scheme if they're actually going to continue forward with that obviously nothing's official until AMD announces this likely at computer text in just a couple weeks, but that's the entire motive behind it. That is exactly why Nvidia did it with their mobile chips. It's exactly why AMD is doing it here. They will have more sales on more units if they don't tell you that there's a difference. You're buying the 15 watt chip and you're getting a worse experience. You're thinking you got a great deal because you're going to look at the product listings. And you're going to see Ryzen AI 9 170 HX for 
I'm just making these prices up, $1,000. And then you're gonna see another one with that same Ryzen AI 9 170HX for $2,000. And you're gonna be like, whoa, this one's half off. Not considering the fact and not being disclosed to you that the one that's a thousand bucks is 15 watts and the one that's two grand is 45 watts because they beefed up the cooling and everything and it's actually gonna perform significantly better and you're getting a much better laptop. You're gonna think you got a steal when in reality you paid for exactly what you got for. And obviously this doesn't necessarily apply to the enthusiasts who do like to make sure they do all of their due diligence and research, but for the average person who's going to Best Buy just trying to compare stuff and pick out whatever's gonna be best for their coming college semester, they're just gonna buy a Mac, man. And then over at Float Plane Steel, we got Scarfo saying, Brett, I too have been caught up with the lore of Frostpunk and await the new game as well. And Orthan saying Frostpunk is one of my favorite games of all time. I just, it's a gem. It's a its a lovely little game that has a lot of depth to it. And I uh, i enjoy playing it. And then over on YouTube, we got one Gabriel saying, unfortunate that tech companies are evolving backwards with their naming convention. Intel, AMD, NVIDIA, USB, DisplayPort, HDMI, why? Because marketing, it it's better. We went to college for, uh, computer marketing, and they told us that if we just make it seem different, then people will buy more, and it's good stuff. And then lastly, we got Dizin Bernard saying, who the f gives a f about AI, my God. To which user responded, certainly not you, which it's honestly, I get it. I fully get the frustration that a lot of people have with AI because it's, it's like this weird amalgamation of like some people use it absolutely none. And then a lot of people use it on the daily, very regularly to get a bunch of little tasks done or potentially help kickstart a lot of the work that they're doing. AI is one of those things where it can span the gamut of actually being utilized in your life in a particular way. But the truth is like the kind of cultural zeitgeist that's happened with AI lately is something that's been going on for quite some time. All of these companies had machine learning models. All of these companies were utilizing AI, machine learning, in the background for a lot of the things that they were doing, but there was no point in talking about it because people didn't give you more money just because you said you were using AI. Whereas now they can. OpenAI and ChatGPT, as soon as that got released to the public, kind of just clicked in the, the brains of investors and the public that, holy crap, wow, we, we, I wanna give this money. And so that's why AI is everywhere. You might not care, and that's totally fine. Not everybody's gonna utilize it in every aspect of their life on a consumer level, but it's it been impacting a lot of things that have been happening on the back end and like database and server centers for years, if not decades at this point. But now they get to talk about it because people care and they'll get more money if they do. Long Island blockchain, baby, has now been renamed to Long Island Artificial Intelligence. And I am not gonna rename this episode. I'm just gonna be done with it. I'll see you back here for more of the hottest tech news tomorrow, my friends.